Fletch up. Hello everyone, I'm Fletch. I'm here at the Harley Davidson dealership and today I'll be doing a review of this guy which is the uh, Softail Breakout 114. As you know, the Softail uh, was first released in 2013 with a completely different bike in the sense that uh, for the old Softails, we're sitting on the, uh, not a rigid frame like it is now, but it was sitting on a separate swing arm with the suspension underneath, right? So the wheel will actually pivot on it. But this is the new uh, Softail range, which features a monoshock. Uh, and this, of course, is the 114 engine, uh, and it uh, features a five-speed transmission. You can see the twin exhaust over there. You have uh, the inverted forks. It comes stock with a daymaker. Now, what isn't stock is the crash bars that you see uh, in front of you here. And, of course, uh, the luggage, which, to me, is a good thing to have because then I can talk about the other topic, which is about touring. Standard is two up seats. And finally, what you have is the 3.5 gallon tank over here, which is about 13.2 meters, which can give you about 200 kilometers uh, to a full tank. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to take this bike out, do a test ride, and give you my impressions of this Softail Breakout 114. Hi folks, I'm here on the bike right now. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is, before I ride off, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the controls. It's pretty standard, it's the same as all the other bikes. You have the, uh, on the left hand handle here, which is the, um, the switch in which you would cycle through the various readings that you see here, that you can see here on the LCD, LCD screen. This is, by the way, a two and a quarter inch LCD screen. So right now it's just showing the time, the RPMs, uh, the odometer, trip A, trip B, and the remaining uh, mileage uh, to a full tank. And then we're back to the time again. Um, I believe that uh, the speedometer will also show the RPMs as well. This indicator that you see here uh, will show the neutral, uh, the gas, ABS, and all the other indicators you need to left and right as well. Uh, and of course you have the horn, uh, high and low beams, and then a flash, left indicator. On the right hand side you have your emergency lights, or your hazard lights as they call it. And then of course your start button, on and off switch, and your right uh, indicator. So let's go ahead and start up the bike. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to do a little quick ride around. Uh, first through town, then through the uh, highway, and then uh, after which back to the Harley Davidson dealership. <clears throat> right, so now I'm on the road and I'm going to take it for a little spin through town, a little bit through the city, then onto the highway, and then back to the Harley Davidson dealership, as I said earlier. Now, to make things uh, a little bit more organized and rather than I ramble on, I'm going to talk about four basic things uh, about this bike. Okay, the first of which is performance, uh, the second of which is uh, comfort the third of which is handling, and the last one, which is the fourth item, uh, which is um, the touring portion uh, of this bike. Right? So I think that's the best way to uh, actually give a more objective uh, view. Well, not really objective because it's still my opinion, but at least you get uh, an objective view of this uh, particular bike. Right? So as I mentioned earlier, this is the new Softail range. Uh, it comes with a mono shock and an easy adjustment on the preloads. In terms of performance, now this is a 114 engine on this particular model. Uh, when you think about uh, power to weight ratio, uh, 
I believe that one, uh, the 114 cubic inch translates to about 1,860 cc's, which is almost equivalent to uh, most of the salon cars that we have here, right? Which is between 1.6 to 1.8 liters. So this is probably more than than just that. And the car, of course, weighs more, so you actually get more uh, acceleration as well. Right? Uh, the air cleaner is a standard air cleaner, um, and of course, the exhaust is two is two to two. So, uh, in a sense, it's not a racing bike like the FXDR, or it's not a performance bike like the FXDR. I would say racing; you can't really race on the FXDR, or at least you won't be able to hold your own against all those sports bikes, but uh, power to rate, weight ratio and uh, and the way it's set up, it's not a performance bike, right? But that being said, 114 is a hefty engine. Uh, I, I ride a 103, so this is a big difference in terms of power. <laughs> and I can actually feel the power as well. It's pretty talky uh, at the lower gears. And it's got good acceleration. I think in, in terms of performance, you can't fault it. I mean, to me, uh, with an engine like this and the, fi and the six tr speed transmission uh, with a cruise gear, you can actually uh, have lower RPMs and uh, the higher speeds, not that you should be doing higher speeds um, when you're riding. Uh, in my case, I have to be careful. Uh, over here, it's, there's a speed limit of about 60 kilometers an hour and there is a traffic light camera above. And uh, just like any bike with, with a, some power, you just want to go. Right. So, in terms of performance, not much to talk about. Uh, next is about comfort. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, or I didn't mention earlier, uh, as you can see from here, um, we, I'm actually on forward controls, which is pretty good. Uh, however, I'm surprised that uh, it is not that way forward um, because my knees are just slightly underneath, uh, as you can see here, slightly underneath uh, the tank, which would mean that um, it might get a little uncomfortable because I don't get a stretch out uh, as I would uh, say on my diner. Uh, so, if, like, my height is one point. Uh, 8 cm, oh, one, sorry, 1 1.8 meters. So that takes me to about 5, 11, 6 feet sometimes, depending on who you're talking to. Uh, so I'm an, I have probably longer inseams than I, than I am taller, so longer legs. Uh, so anything that, that, that scrunches me up will definitely make uh, it uncomfortable in the long run. The stock seats that uh, it has on uh, on this bike is actually pretty hard. Uh, it's okay to ride uh, again around town, short distances. I'll probably give maybe 100, 200 kilometers before you know you start to feel uh, really tired <coughs> or your butt aches. <laughs> so this seat is not. Uh, is not for the iron butts rides that you, that, that you hear about. But again, Harley Davidson does offer uh, in their parts and accessories catalog uh, the sundowner seat. I have the sundowner seat on uh, my diner and it's really, really comfortable. Um, the only bad thing about the sundowner seat is that it raises you a little bit higher. So I don't, uh, it might help in the sense of comfort. Uh, but uh, for your legs, right, if you're a taller person like me, but if uh, you're shorter, that's going to be a little bit uh, hard as well. But 
Hooray, there are a lot of uh, aftermarket parts out there. Uh, sorry, and market sites like, you know, Dennis Kirk, Revzilla, JP Cycles and so forth. And they, you choose the make of your bike and you decide what, um, what seat that you want, right? Uh, whether it's a Mustang, whether it's a Lepera and what have you. Depending on your needs, depending on your aesthetics, depending on what you want to do. But here we're talking about comfort, so you know, you choose a better touring um, seat as opposed to um, one that looks better. You know, if it looks good, it may not be uh, something that you can take for a long ride. Alright, so in terms of comfort, uh, it's okay, the, uh, the forward control. So what I probably suggest is do exactly what they did here. Do crash bars, if you notice that there is another, uh, you can put your legs up on this moustache crash bar and it can act as, you know, <clears throat> you can put your feet up and be comfortable uh, when you're riding. So that is another option. So either changing the seats or adding uh, a crash bar like this uh, with the, uh, little pads there or the rubber bits there so that you can put your legs up on on really long rides uh, but not something that I would encourage anyway because it mean that you in case you have to do something really quick a quick break or something and you end up uh, you know not having enough time to bring your foot down to the rear brakes it's not a good idea but if it's just long straight empty roads probably it's a good idea to uh, it's an interesting idea to have right <clears throat> uh, seating position or riding position um, it is okay I'm not sitting too far back as you can see from my posture right as you can see from my posture here uh, I'm not too far back I'm not too far high I'm not too far up you know my arms are not that far stretched and uh, that will mean that I still have a fairly comfortable uh, riding position. Okay, now I'm heading off to the highway and this is a good chance to uh, really see how this engine performs. Not a good idea to be speeding but I'm probably, yeah. Now, I don't know what is the uh, acceleration like uh, on paper from 0 to 100 but um, to me it really moved and in uh, a quick burst like that I was already at 120 kilometers an hour okay so that's just a little short uh, trip on the high on this little highway and I'm gonna take it back into the city to uh, get a feel of the city ride uh, because that's part of uh, the comfort as well, right? How you feel on the highway, is it comfortable? Uh, I, uh, you push back, but of course, one of the things that I would encourage uh, you to get is either a fairing or uh, a windshield because I can, feel, I can see that um, in the long run and you're going at high speeds, uh, with the wind pushing back at you, it's going to be a little bit tiring because you're holding on for dear life uh, onto the handlebars. But that being said, this particular seat has a little uh, edge up uh, that helps in putting you squarely uh, into the seat, and the lump, and of course protects. Well, not protect your lumbar, uh, your lumbar region. But what it is is that it acts like a, a small backrest in a sense. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, the, the aftermarket parts, they do have, uh, like the Mustang, a uh, touring seat <coughs> with backrest as well. So then, uh, at least if you don't put a windshield and the winds are pushing you back, then uh, you don't feel that tired, right? And uh, today is a Sunday morning, so the family's all out. <coughs> it's a nice sunny day. Great day for a ride. Okay, so we talked about performance, we talked about comfort, let's talk about handling. Straight off the bat, uh, we know that this bike uh, is not um, <clears throat> a drag racer. It is not. 
uh, a bike that you know you would do the twisties on <coughs> because there are two factors that will affect it the handlebars are perfect because then you know you it's not uh, like an ape hang or something you can actually still feel that you can toss it about right like this right easy to toss about but the two factors that affect it are the 240 millimeters uh, rear tire so you thick tires it's really tough to uh, do the corners and you only have a 28 degree lean angle right so what that means is that You know, you can't really do, uh, you can't take very deep corners. You'll be hitting your uh, uh, foot bags. Or worse, you'll be hitting your exhaust. And I don't think uh, anybody wants that. <coughs> because worry is. Wow. Now that goes to show how hard it is to take a corner. Because that's a pretty tight corner if I wanted to take the second lane. And literally, I was going offline because it was really hard to uh, actually handle it. Well, not hard, you can, you need to put some muscle into it. And here's a little proof that it's not that big a bike and with luggage, you can still <laughs> lane split. Look at that power. Right, so I have to take it easy on the corners not to go in too hard and to uh, not to take it too tight see it starts to shift a little bit and I was not taking a tight corner I could actually feel the rear tires shift so ladies and gentlemen when you ride a breakout be careful take the corners a little slower than you you would normally do <clears throat> the rear tires are not um, conducive to uh, tight corners all right so still in the city heading out towards uh, the exit to the highway again I'm lucky uh, not much traffic today so I can take it through his paces Yeah, so lean angle and the large tires. But I think the handlebars are perfect. You can, of course, change it uh, to something different to suit your style. And I think since, you know, um, I think since we're not going to be drag racing or taking tight corners and stuff, uh, you probably, well, wow, that's, wow, that took me a, way further than I expected <clears throat> sorry I need to be on this side well I think you can see uh, earlier from the corners I took um, how uh, differently it handled you know again large tires are a little bit hard to take uh, corners on I think I'm going to give you another example here there's uh, coming onto the uh, up ramp to the highway or it is a small part of the highway uh, it's pretty pretty tight uh, corners see how it handles if I uh, hopefully I don't feel the uh, the bike slipping or the rear end slipping I think it's a lot about getting used to the bike as well and then I think once you know how the bike handles I'm sure you can take corners well enough without it slipping knowing the speed that you need to be handling it on and 
probably knowing the lean angle that you need to take without it slipping. I think my lean angle wasn't uh, too far and again, uh, I was, well, this is not my bike so I have to be a little bit careful. The last thing I need to do is drop this bike. Then, uh, all, <laughs> then, then there'll be hell to pay. Uh, <coughs> uh, once again, a little sightseeing. Uh, I think I mentioned in my last video, this is the uh, Marina Bay Sands. Now, if you're a fan of the HBO uh, series, uh, Westworld, season three will actually be featuring this hotel. Uh, little interesting thing to note. So this is not really a highway highway. Um, but we need to make our way to the highway uh, to get back. Um, you know, one thing I like about Singapore is that the signs are really very clear. So even if I wasn't too sure, I'll just follow the signs. And I will be where I'm supposed to be. So uh, that's where I'm headed for the MCE AYE uh, highway. But the suspension actually handles uh, this road is not exactly the best in the world. Uh, and it actually ha handles uh, all the bumps and everything pretty well. I don't really feel it. I'm jarred a little bit, but uh, that's about it. Right. So we've covered uh, performance, we've covered comfort, uh, we've co covered handling, and now on to the last thing, which is I have to be careful taking the corner, uh, which is touring, right? So heading off to the highway now. Um, the breakout does not come with any luggage, right? Or the crash bar, as I said before earlier. Uh, but it's a good thing that they had it earlier. So if you notice in my uh, opening video. Uh, That luggage was already mounted on this bike. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from here. I don't know if you can see it from here. Uh, but I believe that the standard Harley Davidson uh, luggage is about 20 liters per side, so that's about 40 liters, which is quite good, right? So in terms of touring, you can add luggage to it if you don't want to get something from the P and A catalog. Again, there are the aftermarket sites that you can go to and I'm sure that uh, if you choose the right uh, bike from their choices and, and the correct fitment, you'll be able to then get uh, some good luggage. Uh, but again, you know, uh, if you get something that's uh, 30 liters of both sides, that's pretty big. Uh, it will mean that, well, it's really a bit tougher to, to take the corners. Um, then lane splitting and, and, and stuff like that would be a bit tough. But again, uh, I'm sure that they have detachable kits uh, on it as well. Right, so we're almost back to uh, the Harley Davidson showroom. Um, I do hope uh, that you found this uh, review, if you call it, and my impressions of uh, the Softails Breakout 114. Please do leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, those of you who actually have a breakout, tell me how it feels like uh, and handling, especially on, on the large tires. Um, and don't forget, uh, of course, to, if you do like this, this video, please do subscribe by hitting the, the subscribe button. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell uh, to, let me, to let you know when I'm releasing the next video. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, you guys have a great and safe ride. See you again soon.